American Horror Story Delicate had to be split up into two parts due to the actor strike which finally came to a resolution just two months ago back in November, and since then production has finally resumed on both AHS Delicate and the similarly split up American Horror Stories Season 3. And today I've got all of the set photos, casting updates, and rumors about both of these half seasons. And then the second half of this video will be dedicated to breaking down the very serious revelations that came from Angelica Ross just a few months ago, which I have not gotten the chance to properly cover since the actor strike. So we've got a lot to discuss today, so let's just start with some of the juicy photos that come from the set of Delicate Part 2. On November 27th, 2023, cast and crew resumed filming in New York for the second half of Delicate, and soon after we began to get a handful of set photos thanks to paparazzi which were then posted by American Horror Story Brazil on Twitter. Firstly, we got a peek at Emma Roberts filming some new scenes as Anna, where honestly, it seems like she is not quite in costume because this outfit doesn't really read Anna to me. Anna never really dresses in colors like this. This outfit does, however, remind me of a lot of the things Brooke Thompson wore in American Horror Story 1984, but that is besides the point. This same day, set photos were released of a new cast member, Tommy Dorfman, filming scenes for Delicate Part 2 as well. Details on her character are completely absent from public knowledge at this time, but if this is her character's costume, I'd take a wild guess that maybe she's playing a lawyer involved in Virginia's trial, or maybe she works for Siobhan at the PR office. Next, Kim Kardashian was spotted on set for Part 2 as well in some outfits that I think are again probably not going to be on screen costumes for Siobhan, with the exception of this snake print number which I think fits very well with the style of Siobhan's character, but again it could just be Kim's wardrobe on the day to day. Speaking of Kim, it was announced that a new Ryan Murphy project is being developed with Kim Kardashian set to star as a high profile divorce lawyer. Deadline describes the series as a high-end, glossy, and sexy adult procedural. Deadline also reports that the series is eyeing a late 2024 production start date with an intended release in 2025 on Hulu. Now let's talk about a series of set photos that have been circulating the internet that may contain some significant spoilers for the remainder of American Horror Story Delicate. So consider this your spoiler alert and feel free to skip to the timecode on your screen if you want to avoid these potential spoilers. Alright, now that it's just those of us who have either read the book or don't care about spoilers, these set photos feature a handful of characters wearing the notorious costume of the bird women that have been stalking Anna throughout the season. That being said, the chances that these scenes are all taking place inside of Anna's head are very high based on part one of the season, so there's a very good chance that these photos don't actually spoil anything for real, but with all of that being said, the characters that have been spoiled spotted in the bird costume are Cara Delevingne's Ivy, Annabelle Dexter Jones as either Sonia or Adeline, Juliana Canfield's Talia, and finally Kim Kardashian's Siobhan, whose costume I must say blows every other bird woman out of the water completely, but again these could all be inside of Anna's head but for all we know, this could be legitimate as well. And considering the amount that the show has already changed from the source material already, your guess is truly as good as mine. All right, we've now entered the spoiler-free zone again, so let's speculate about when Delicate Part 2 may return to our screens. While there has been no official confirmation from FX on any premiere date, with the show's filming schedule being back in full force after a brief break for the holidays, I think it's safe to say that FX wants part two out in the first half of 2024. Unlike network television, cable channels like FX are a bit unpredictable. They can literally air a season of television whenever they want to without adhering to the typical seasonal television schedules that most networks operate under. And with only half a season to air, they can literally fit this season anywhere, so I think if they don't want to lose what momentum they have left, they should not begin airing Delicate any later than March. That being said, I think anywhere around March or April may be what they're shooting for, but that's just my speculation, and the optimist in me says it could come as early as February, but 
If I were to put money on it, I would say March. But do not get your hopes up until you've heard from FX themselves, because what do I know? Moving away from Delicate for a moment, let's discuss American Horror Stories Season 3, which as I mentioned earlier, has also resumed production on its second batch of episodes. And with that comes a handful of updates. Firstly, Henry Winkler announced on the talk show The Talk that he has been cast on the spin-off's third season, thanks to his son, Max Winkler, who has directed a handful of episodes of both AHS and American Horror Stories. I never realized that Max Winkler was Henry Winkler's son, but hey, you learn something new every day. My son Max told us at 10 that he wanted to be a director, and now he is running a show in New York City and he called me and hired me. I'm going to be directed by a young man, Max Spicer, who was in Max's class at USC. Henry Winkler, of course, is most known for his role in Happy Days, along with countless other television shows and films. My favorite performances of his off the top of my head are, of course, Principal Himbry in Scream and Dr. Saperstein in Parks and Rec. We also know that there are five episodes left to air of season three, after the first four episodes of course aired last October as a one-night Huluween event. Who knows if Hulu will go for a similar drop of these final five episodes, or if they will go back to the weekly releases that American Horror Story seasons one and two had. Regardless, the five episodes that will eventually air this year are Backrooms, The Thing Under the Bed, Howl, Clone, and Leprechaun. There are a lot of interesting themes that could be at play in this season, and I'm most looking forward to Backrooms and Leprechauns, just because I can't imagine how the show will twist these themes into the AHS universe, and that excites me. In other AHS news, this year's Emmy Awards ceremony featured a handful of memorable reunions of some historical television shows as category presenters. And to celebrate AHS Murder House, the Emmys got Dylan McDermott to reunite with himself. Yes. Now, the only other reunion that night that consisted of only one person was the one they did for Game of Thrones, which consisted of only Peter Dinklage, so at least AHS is in some good company, but every other show that reunited at the Emmys had at least two cast members on the stage. Early reports included Connie Britton as a presenter with Dylan, which of course would have been great, but that did not happen. And in other other AHS news, AHS Delicate has scored a nomination at the People's Choice Awards under the category of The Sci-Fi Fantasy Show of the Year. These awards are fan-voted, so if you feel strongly about AHS winning this category, you know what to do. Alright, now I want to talk about some AHS news that happened over the summer that I haven't had a chance to discuss Let's just say 2023 was a very controversial year for American Horror Story in more ways than one, but the story I want to focus on today is the allegations brought up by former Pose and AHS star Angelica Ross, mainly allegations of transphobia by a cast member, allegations of AHS being a toxic work environment, and allegations of false promises from Ryan Murphy. And of course, just as a content warning, this discussion will include discussions of racism, transphobia, and references to police brutality. So if any of that will make you uncomfortable, feel free to step away from this part of the video. Angelica Ross initially brought these revelations to light via Twitter, but she later elaborated on those tweets in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, as well as a handful of Instagram Lives, so Angelica's first tweet that had people raising their eyebrows at one Ryan Murphy was a screenshot of an email exchanged between Angelica and Ryan. The email from Ryan Murphy is dated July 3rd, 2020, and it reads, Remember your idea about a horror season starring black women? Well, I'm doing it. Not sure of the story yet, but we will start a writer's room in the fall. Along with you, who are the other four women I should get? I think you, Kiki Palmer, Gabby Sidibe, not sure of the fourth? End quote. So in this email, Ryan Murphy claimed he was doing a season of American Horror Story featuring mainly black actresses based on an idea 
of Angelica Ross's. It's also important to note that this email exchange happened on July 3rd, 2020, which was just a week after the murder of George Floyd and the subsequent protests against police brutality and in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. It is also worth noting that the season that they are discussing would have been season 11, and while I do admire a lot about AHS NYC, it is very odd to me now with this context that that specific cast is exceptionally white, male, and cisgender, considering its subject matter and with the original intention of this season. Anyways, Angelica Ross's response is also included in the screenshot where she goes on to suggest a handful of black actresses that could take part in the season, including Debbie Morgan, Lynn Whitfield, Alfra Woodard, Kiki Palmer, Gabby Sidibe, Adina Porter, Angela Bassett, and Amia Scott. In Angelica's interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she says that this email on July 3rd was the last time that Ryan Murphy communicated with her. And yes, Angelica Ross did film Double Feature after these emails, but she goes on to say that Ryan Murphy was never on set for American Horror Story, at least during her two seasons. So Angelica went on to say in her interview with The Hollywood Reporter that the next time she would contact Ryan Murphy would be the following February. She says, quote, So in February, I sent an email to Ryan Murphy and I say, quote, Good morning. I'm just organizing and thinking about what season 11's focus could be. And I asked him if I could be on the producing side as well saying, I think I could add a lot to the table in the overall storyline if we are still looking to do a black-led cast. But he stopped communicating with me. The interviewer then asks Angelica if she has any theories as to what exactly happened between herself and Ryan Murphy, and Angelica speculates that it may have been Angelica's support of Poe's writer-director-producer Janet Mock, after Mock gave an impassioned speech criticizing Murphy and Hollywood in general at the Poe's season 3 premiere. Janet Mock's speech at the premiere happened in April of 2021, so this timeline of a rift happening around this time makes a bit of sense. So I've summarized the rift between Ryan Murphy and Angelica Ross based on my understanding, so now let's go get into the parts of the article where Angelica discusses her intense experience while filming American Horror Story 1984. While Angelica Ross and her Hollywood Reporter interview discuss a lot of important topics regarding her experiences in the industry, the thing that garnered the most attention from media and AHS fans alike was, of course, Angelica's revelation that Emma Roberts had made a transphobic comment to her while on the set of AHS 1984. Angelica also went on Instagram Live to explain her recollection of the conversation that happened between her Emma Roberts, and AHS director John J. Gray. I'm standing in front of Emma, talking to her like this, and she's, you know, she's in front of me, her back against the mirror. She goes, John, Angelica's being, Angelica's being mean, and he goes, and I know she's being, you know, she's not being for real, for real, she's just being whatever, and, and John is like, okay, ladies, you know, that's enough, let's, you know, like, get back to work, and she then looks at me, and she goes, she goes, don't you mean lady, and she turns around like this, and covers her mouth, and goes back here, but can't see, I'm looking at her dead ass in the camera, like, what the fuck did you just say? And I'm standing there looking her dead ass in the damn thing, and I'm like, trying to process the fuck she just said. And I'm like, I'm standing there, and she walked away. My blood is boiling boiling because I'm like if I say something it's gonna be me that's the problem and I know this because there was someone who spoke up about what she was doing and they got repercussions from it not her they did so when I saw that happening I was just like I I'm done. I'm done. I didn't speak to that bitch the entire time after that. So we had scenes together and I never spoke to her. 
she said, she said to me, she could feel the energy coming off of me. She was like, are you okay? You haven't been talking. I'm like, mm-hmm. Because... Bitch, don't play me. You've been playing mind games with everybody on the set. And everybody's been waiting for the moment that you would get me. Like I told you, because the first thing I saw on set was her like yelling at the director. And basically trying to make him cry. Basically was like, what are you going to do about it, John? You're going to cry? You're going to cry about it? When, 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 John? You know, like I was like, I just looked out the slate. Like she was trying to make it very clear that she was number one on the call sheet. And she was the one in charge. Um, and she was making sure that her trailer was right outside of the of the, the sound lot. Folks seemed like they were just kept ready to, they wanted to fight her all the time because it was just like, she was playing like psychological games on set. Like she was playing mind games with people. And so one of the actors comes up to me and was like, can you believe, he's like, I mean, one of the actors comes up to me, they're like, can you believe that bitch? <laughs> they're like, they're like, she had the nerve to ask us what we were all making for this show. And mind you, I was not in the circle. I was not in the circle when this conversation was happening. And they were telling me that she was playing, um, she was smoking her cigarette. You know, she smokes her cigarette outside the um the trailer. And is in like okay, well, what's everybody getting? What's everybody getting paid? And I don't think nobody was really like answering the question or whatever. And what the actor told me, I guess allegedly, right? What the what the actor told me is that she was like, well, as long as you're not getting paid more than a hundred thousand dollars an episode, and then like kind of walked away. After this story began to make headlines, Angelica tweeted that Emma had given her a phone call to apologize, an apology that Angelica Ross told The Hollywood Reporter was, quote, a, a bumpy conversation. You can pause this video to read Angelica's full quote, but basically Emma owns up to her actions and claims to be an ally, which Angelica pushes back on stating that allyship is an action, and elaborating that Emma does not use her platform to combat anti-blackness or transphobia. Personally, I think transphobia or any instances of microaggressions and beyond do not have any place on a film or television set or any workplace, and it really baffles me that this continues to happen on Ryan Murphy shows. We've all heard the horror stories about the unprofessionalism and racism on the Glee set, but to have similar things occurring in 2019 on American Horror Story by the same production company that was currently producing Pose, yeah, it's very shocking. Emma Roberts being willing to have a conversation with Angelica about her behavior is a good step, albeit four years too late. I just hope that Emma continues to engage in these conversations and stands up for trans and queer issues moving forward. I haven't seen any of this yet, but I agree with what Angelica said. It does take actions to show one's allyship. In another instance of onset unprofessionalism during the filming of American Horror Story 1984, Angelica Ross described to The Hollywood Reporter about a crew member who often wore politically charged t-shirts that danced on the line of just being outright racist. This was a crew member who was operating a vehicle which Angelica had to drive on screen for a scene, so she was required to work within a close proximity to this guy day after day for a certain shoot. And when she began to speak up about these t-shirts making her uncomfortable, there were no actions taken. So one day during a take, Angelica says she walked off camera and into a production van where she said that she would not come out until the t-shirt situation was handled. Losing daylight, the crew begins to panic and director John J. Gray tells Angelica that it is an issue of freedom of speech and that they cannot do anything about this guy with the offensive t-shirts. It is after this conversation with the director that Angelica tweets the following tweet, quote, it's a shame that I do all this work out in the real world on anti-blackness and racism and have to come to a set and do the same work, end quote. Then, according to Angelica, about 10 seconds later, she gets a call from a producer who tells her that Ryan Murphy thinks she should take her tweet down. 
saying that they're all a family and that they shouldn't share these things outside of the family. Eventually, Angelica agrees to take down the tweet, but says, I am being told that this man wearing these t-shirts has freedom of speech, but I'm the one being told to take down a tweet. It is then that she gets a heated phone call from Ryan Murphy himself. My interpretation of Angelica's words are, Ryan was essentially taking credit for the doors that Pose opened, despite the fact that Pose would not have worked if it weren't for the contributions of its phenomenal and largely black and queer cast, as well as its immensely talented writers and producers like Stephen Canals, Janet Mock, and Our Lady J. I've seen more activism and action taken by the cast members of Pose, like Angelica Ross and India Moore, than Ryan Murphy or any members of the AHS cast. Angelica elaborates on this point, saying, India Moore and myself have always been ones who opened up our mouths and spoke, and Ryan said that was one of the things that he liked about me. And so to co-opt that energy only so that he can wield my essence whenever he wants to take me out of his actor toolbox, it's just another form of tokenization, because he doesn't really mean what he says that he means. Ryan Murphy's team released a statement regarding this exact phone call between Angelica to Ross and Ryan after the t-shirt walk-off, and they have a slightly different version of events. Mainly, they claim that Ryan did not curse Angelica out, and they have some other discrepancies as well that you can see on your screen. It's unclear in this article whatever happened with this t-shirt guy, and while I support free speech, I do think that people should conduct themselves in a professional manner in their workplace. The thought of going to any job with a political t-shirt is just annoying behavior, and this man's unprofessionalism led to a bigger issue that could have been easily avoided if this man had just set his own ideologies aside for the sake of doing his job well and efficiently. I encourage you all to click on the link to Angelica's full Hollywood Reporter interview because I couldn't cover everything and she has a lot of important things to say. She also discusses how she is leaving Hollywood to pursue a political career in Georgia, but that doesn't mean that she won't continue to act, because she's got projects set to come out, and she says she's, quote, going to continue to create with those who want to create in a more liberated way. All right, there you have it. That is everything we know about the upcoming season of American Horror Story, as well as Angelica Ross's shocking revelations about the unprofessionalism at play on these very shows. I spend so much time dissecting. I know it's not the most fun thing to talk about, and it may not seem super timely since this article is from September, but it also feels like if I don't address this in a video, it's like I'm ignoring it, which I definitely am not. Um, at the end of the day, 2023 really opened my eyes to just how unprofessional and of a place Hollywood can still be, and how easy it is for artists to be used and manipulated by people in power. I have been an Angelica Ross fan since I was introduced to her in Pose, and I have become an even even bigger fan watching her take all of this on with so much self-assuredness and strength. Before I go, I just want to mention that I've opened, I've reopened my channel memberships uh, once again, so if you want to get my videos earlier than anybody else, you can hit that join button below and become a member. I've also got a super-sized video about the production history of Scream Queens going up for all channel members on February 5th that won't be made public until February 19th. So you know what to do if you want to check that out along with some of my past member exclusive uploads. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.